All right, Mr. Fobbs. So, what was your what was your journey like into fitness? How did you get in this space? How did you get in the whole wellness oh. fitness game? I got into fitness uh, by naturally as an athlete. You know, you you have to go to the gym, you have to work out, you have to get stronger to increase athleticism. So it started for me in high school. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't take it, you know, too serious. But as I got to college and I saw like the more time I spent in the gym, there was a direct reflection between my performance and uh, on the field yeah. and the weights that I was pushing in the gym. So it really started there. Uh, after I got done playing football, I started uh, training at a gym while I was selling personal training. Basically, I was a counselor and, oh, yeah. and uh, from there, you know, I kind of, I would take people through their initial consultation, give them a quick workout. And they would always ask me like, yo, why don't you train me? And I'm like, well, I'm not technically certified to do that. So I can't do that for you. Right. But more and more people kept continuously asking me to do that for them. And I was like, that's got the wheels turning in my head. I'm like, why don't I just train? Like, I love what I'm doing. I love this aspect of, of health and wellness and bringing people closer to their fitness goals. And if they want me to be their trainer, then I should, you know, pursue that. Yeah. So that's, that's really how I got started. I uh, got my NASM cert. And then as soon as I did that, went to 24, transitioned to Orange Theory. And now we're here at Tempo. I feel like that's very common. I know for myself, it was the same thing. I actually was the opposite of you. And it's funny because I was talking about this yesterday in high school. I played football and I love football. You know that you I play love football. football. Exactly. See, exactly. <laughs> I played football and I love football. But we moved from, my dad was in the military. We moved from Alaska to Phoenix, Arizona mm -hmm. the day of my freshman year. Wow. So I remember I was like, all right, let me go try out for the freshman football team. And I said, no, not out here. Not, not in this weather. So I said, you know what? I heard they're doing a school play over there. Let me go try out for that. It's indoors. So then I kind of like left sports behind and played soccer. But then when I got in the military, I started working out. And same thing, people would work out with me. And I was, I was that person in the gym that I was on Google on my phone, on my Blackberry. I was like, what, what, how do you work out chest? And then slowly but surely, I figured things out and people would work out with me. And then I was like, you know, when I get out of this whole little like military thing, maybe I should be a trainer. Really? But I didn't know you could make money doing it. I was like, I don't know what personal trainers do, how they make money. I wasn't sure. Wellness wasn't something that I grew up learning. And I noticed, I know that in the black community, a lot of us, or a lot of people feel like, you know, the ways that you can make it out or you can like take your family to the next height is through athletics. But for us, it wasn't like that. I was always a singer, I was a performer. That's what I was gonna do. But like wellness and fitness, those were things that we just did not talk about. Is that something that like you learned or? Is yeah. a family trait? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I've actually brought it up in class as well. Um, my mom, the only fitness thing I've ever seen my mom do, my my stepdad, he was never really into fitness, but growing up, my mom had these Billy Blanks tapes. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know the VHSs, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. a little Tybo. Yeah. And uh yeah, so she would she would do those and you know 30 minutes to an hour workouts and that was the extent of yeah. what i knew about fitness and i think that like that's a great segue you know into the fact that their billy blanks was like one of the originators and it's and like he, it within fitness mm -hmm. and at that he was a black male so yeah. um that was kind of like my first introduction but outside of that there was never really a, a requirement i mean i was I was in soccer growing up and um, a few other team sports like basketball. But yeah. outside of that, like, you know, I, as kids, like we're not training no. now, like now, like now, now yeah. these kids, they, they all have personal oh, trainers. Different. Yeah, it's yeah. very different it's very now. Different. But my mom, she was like, no, that's that's extra money. Yeah, yeah we don't. You want to eat this week? OK, or then we're not going to do that. I want to go back to I like that you brought up the Billy Banks thing, because I feel like as black people in the fitness space, since there aren't that many of us, we all kind of get put into these, like everyone thinks we're gonna be this certain thing. Mm -hmm. So like you had Billy Banks, who is the guy that, Shanti, yep. that did Insanity. Yep. Yep. So like for me, everyone was always like, oh, you're gonna be like, oh, like Ty Bo. And I was like, no, that's not what we're gonna do. Or everyone all the time, especially being gay, they're like, oh, you're like Shanti. And I'm like, or I could just be like me. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Do you feel like you've ever gone into a space and because of the color of your skin or just because whatever the preconceived notion is of you, 
people have kind of put you into a box of like who you should be as a fitness instructor? Yeah, um, in my experience, it hasn't necessarily been because uh, of my ethnicity. Mm -hmm. It's more so been the fact that I was an athlete. So mm -hmm. a lot of people, especially when I was training at 24 and I'm trying to like recruit and I would, you know, have that initial discussion and tell them my background and they would just kind of like be turned off because they're like, oh, he's an athlete. He's going to be like trying to push me way too hard. Yeah. You know, um, so yeah, that was that was kind of my experience with it. But, you know, and, and I'm not gonna lie, like yeah. when I first started training, that was that was kind of how I was. And you I think were, that and it could have been it could have been the fact that like I'm I'm trying to recruit these people yeah. and they're like seeing me do my my sessions already and they're yeah. like, yeah, he's just doing too much. But like <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, there's I have no I have no business using a TRX and like yeah. and doing the things that they're doing on the TRX. Like that's not good for me and my body. And I think that yeah. uh, a lot of trainers actually start out that way. You know, oh, they think that, you know, they think yeah. that like, oh, if I push them, if I see them just uh, overexerting themselves, yeah. that's a sign of a good workout, yeah. you know? And that's not always the case. Everybody's body is different. Transitioning to tempo, that's definitely helped me realize that, that, that everybody is different, yes. you know? And not everybody can train the same exact way, um, nor yeah. does everybody want to train the same way. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's definitely been a, a major realization for me being on this platform. It's like, you know, you got to have empathy, you know, yeah. you got to have empathy and you got to be able to reel things back. So that's one that's huge. I love that you pointed out the empathy thing, because I also think, too, as a person of color, as, as men and people of color, we definitely have to have empathy. Yeah. I think because the preconceived, as we just talked about, like, you're going to be this. Like, I remember on one of our first shoots, I think you were upstairs, but we were shooting something for Tempo, and I remember the director, or someone outside the company, was like, all right, so you know how you teach your classes, like you're like the drill sergeant, you're like, ugh, really tough. And I, I looked at him and I go, you've never taken one of my classes, have you? So along those lines, how would you say fitness helps you with your, you know, mental wellness space? Yeah. You know what's funny about that is I had a big reckoning with that last year, you know, we are fortunate and lucky to have this job and like we get to not only do what we love but we get to do what we love as our jobs our career like i've learned that through the years when i'm like oh excited to go to work or i get to do something I'm passionate about i used to think that was everybody yeah. it's not it's very rare that people are passionate some people just go to work because they have to go to work but i also had to realize i've got to carve out a time to still have like my workouts my run whatever fitness that i'm doing for that day and it not be tied to something that was, you know, a project for work or not be tied to something that has to get done by a deadline. Cause that's really hard. And I know, especially at my position here, like making sure that all of you coaches have that as well too. Like understanding that, yes, it's their job to, you know, produce these classes, but you also have to understand that that's, that's their, that's their therapy. That's their mental release for the day. I think I explained it to someone once. I was like, you know, if you're a bartender, I used to be a bartender. Everybody likes to have a drink. I mean, most people like to have a drink every once in a while, but I never wanted to drink where I worked yeah. because that's where I work. It's hard to separate mm -hmm. those two. Mm -hmm. And for me, especially like during the pandemic and in the last few years, like I had to get away and I, I've had to make sure I make an effort to, hey, this hour a day, this is for nobody but me in my workout. And I, and I need it because it's a time, I'm an overthinker. I overthink everything. I don't have to overthink when I work out. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know what I wanna do. So it's one hour a day where I have a singular focus and it's seamless for me. And I need it. Like I, if I, there is a big difference. You can tell when I work out and I don't work out, it's like when I'm hangry. When I don't work out and when I'm hangry, don't come around me. It's not fun. I'm not a good person. I react. <laughs> I react. I don't respond to people. No, I definitely, I definitely feel you on that. And I feel like, uh, you know, for me, personal experience, when I was at 24 and yeah. you're spending, you know, doing split shifts, spending your first half of the day and then going home for a quick little break and then spending the second half of the day always in the gym, mm -hmm. that like kind of took the, the want for me to want to work out because, because yeah. like you said, like, if I'm here all day and this is my job, you know, it's hard to want to work out yeah. when you're at the gym all day. At that point, 
you're exhausted. You're like, I don't, I want to be anywhere but here. Yeah. And like kind of the way I've, I've adapted to that is by, it's, it's been yoga for me. Yeah. It's been yoga for me, um, you know, and, and group classes, yeah. group classes, because even, even now, like, you know, we do so much programming, we do our workouts on the mat, but when I go to the gym for myself, yeah, I don't want to have to worry about programming, yeah. you know? So group classes, great. that has been like my cheat code because I'm I like, was. let me go ahead and put, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm here for this hour. Yeah. I know that it's going to start at this time. It's going to end at this time mm -hmm. and everything in between is going to be taken care of all my, all my, you know, worries about what exercise, my exercise selection yeah. and like everything's going to be taken care of. And, and I get to put that responsibility on someone else, you know? I feel that it's so true. I love, that's like how I got into group exercises because I was like, oh, so it's just like personal training, but for 50. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, like this, I could do this. Uh, but I also, I like what you said about yoga because I remember when you and I first started talking about the yoga journey. And I remember I said to you, I was like, Brian, you should get into yoga. One, because there isn't that many black people in yoga. Mm -hmm. But two, I was like, you've got that like athletic build. And here's the thing, like you can't tell Brian that he's got a build or he's athletic because it goes to his head. But I was like, I'm gonna take this chance, I'm gonna tell him. But I was like, you've got that athletic build and being a person of color. And if you do this, like bro, that there, that's, that lane is open. Yeah. Cause there's nobody that does that. How has that been for you? It's been, it's been transformative to say the least. Yeah. Uh, you know, yoga, I started, I, I started like seriously taking classes at the beginning of 2022. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking these classes and these, I was doing heated yoga. Yeah. And at that point, I'm like, I'm starting to notice things in my body. I'm like, hold on, I'm a little bit more limber now. Hold yeah. on, like, yeah. I'm every single time I'm, I'm getting closer to, you know, the splits. And I'm like, <laughs> hey, I, I could get with this, you know, yeah. but. I uh, still can't do it all the way. I was going to say, yet, if but... I walk in one day and you're just doing the splits in the green room, I'm going to be like the Homer Simpson meme. I'm just going to back into the Let me be. Let me be. Let me do my thing. You know, let me, I'm, I'm, I'm in my peace right now. But, yeah. but yeah, no, the entering the yoga space, man, it's been, it's been so dope just to see how separated I was. Yeah and on what levels I was separated. And, and the more I take these yoga classes, the more I like fully submerge myself into that space, I'm, I'm getting more intimate with myself, you know? From a physical standpoint, like I said, flexibility is increasing, but also just this mind muscle connectedness. It's like, you, you just are, at, in one like with your body you know you are truly a whole yeah. and but aside from that though it's like the the mental aspect too you know you you connecting with your spirit like you i don't know if you've ever done like a heated yoga class yeah. and yeah yeah but like even at the end of the class and this is like regular yoga classes as well but it's like once you get done with the class you have like this extra boost of energy yeah. but at the same time you're at peace and it's like all of the stressors that you went into class, yeah, it's just like, you know, dispersed. Yoga's and great. I love yoga. It's one of those things that I'm like, I need to do it more. And that's it. I just need to do it more because <laughs> yeah. I don't do it enough. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. And it's something that, you know, it's not like strength training or, or resistance training. Like it's a lot of it is just you and your body weight. Like all you have to do is really show up and, um, you know, there's there's oftentimes you go, you go into the gym and people are like, oh, I, I have to lift X amount of weight to to do this thing. But it's like when it, when you take a yoga approach, it's like you don't need all of the external stuff. All you need is you yourself or me, myself and I basically, yeah. you know, um, but transitioning into that space has definitely been a blessing for me because, you know, we're getting older. Yeah. And I'm not gonna wanna lift weights, heavy weights for the rest of my life. So I think that for me, it's like getting into this space where it's, it's not as um, strenuous on my body. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. Cause I know, I look at some of that, I remember when I'm like QAing some of the workouts, I'll be looking at like 
Coach Colby and I was like, thrusters again, she's at it. I'm yeah. not doing it. <laughs> We're all looking like, ooh, Jeez. burpees, not Jeez. for me. And so it's, it, that, it is that unlocking of like, how can I just keep this going, but prolong it? I think also too, the unique thing about, you know, yoga is that there's so many different layers. There's mm -hmm. so many different things you can do with it. And um, when it comes to like, you know, mastering yoga, uh, it's a lifelong journey. And I think that that gives me something to look forward to because it's like, I'm not just gonna do this course or I'm not just gonna do this, this program and be done with it, right? It's like, once I've learned a little bit about this and, and this, is, this is super interesting, it makes you wanna deep dive into other aspects of yoga. So like, um, I got certified with my, with, within, it was a 200 hour, the vinyasa flow was the focus. Mm -hmm. And my next one is going to be yin focus, which is more restorative. And, um, you know, I think that that is a way that I'm able to, to not only diversify the knowledge that I have um, around fitness and wellness, but also just, just a, another opportunity for me to like build value especially within our, our platform, you yeah. know? You know, real question I have for you, because I think this is interesting. And I think real answer. I have only, to. only. Um, and I think this, this is minds of everyone everywhere. We were all progressing as we learned, but I feel like there was always a stigma with yoga, especially when men would do yoga. But I feel like a lot of professional athletes over the last few years have started to do it because of the benefits of it. You as a black man, do you feel like you've ever gotten like, especially like you talked about going into your friend groups and stuff. Have you ever told them like, oh, I'm gonna get into yoga and received any like yoga, like weirdness about like, why would you want to do yoga? Um, no, cause all those people that would have gave that response, they've been cut off. <laughs> oh. It's been delivered. Yeah, it's right. Been delivered. But, but honestly, no, man. Like I, I feel like everybody that I have explained, you know, that too, they've, they've been very supportive, yeah. you know? And they, it's, it's actually been quite the opposite. It's been like more so, well, let us know when you're coaching your first class. Like awesome. you're, you know, let, I wanna come support. Like I wanna see what that's about. And, and a lot of times it's also like, oh, if you're gonna be doing that, like that's actually something that I could do. Oh yeah. You yeah. know? So yeah, it, it's actually been the complete opposite for me. All right, so you just went to Peru. What was that like? What was that trip all about? Man, that trip was a lot. It was a lot. It was about a lot of things. Um, I went uh, on behalf of Warrior Retreats, which okay. is basically a rite of passage for leaders uh, all across the world. And it was a two week trip. And every single day we just, we just did something completely different from the day prior to. Um, we spent like four days in the jungle, just deep Amazon jungle removed from the rest of society, removed from internet connection. And uh, really that was, that was like an eye-opening experience in itself, just, you know, living in, in, in these little cots with, you know, the, the netting so that mosquitoes yeah. wanna get on you and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it was, just, it was just nice to, to live simplistically, you mm -hmm. know? And like I said, be removed from everything else and uh and yeah it was it was a journey but that was like the first half of the trip we uh did plant medicine and that was a real eye-opening experience for me um moving forward uh we spent some time in cusco uh there was some some active activities we we participated in we did some hikes and uh Honestly, that trip was really just about, we did a, a huge initiative um, to raise as much money as we could. Uh, I believe we raised a little over $20,000 and that money went to the lodge that we were staying in. Um, it went to the, the less fortunate, the kids. Uh, we, we got a whole bunch of presents because this was around Christmas time. So we got a whole bunch of presents for them. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, really just got to spend time connecting with them, playing. We played soccer, you know, uh, got a couple footballs and uh, were, you know, just playing catch, teaching the kids how to play catch. And um, yeah, it was, it was 
just very heartwarming knowing that the work we were doing was really making an impact within the communities out there. And um, aside from that, uh, we had a day of service where we went to, uh, I forget the name of it specifically, but it was um, basically the spot where disabled people, like the criteria to get in is that you could not take care of yourself and you had nobody to look out after you. Yeah. And um, and so a lot of these people with disabilities were, were being held there and we just went there to spread love and you know spend time with them and um and yeah that's that's kind of the gist of of that trip but um it was real eye-opening just to see how these people who come from less fortunate situations than us out here in uh, the united states were still just so much more happy you could tell you know um and I truly believe that, you know, the, the less you have, the, the more you actually have. Yeah. So how have the classes that you've coached here at Tempo kind of changed or shifted from when you first started to now? First thing that comes to mind is a lot less. <laughs> I, you know, being that my role is somewhat different now, I teach a lot yeah. less, but more, I also think it's mindset. I. Obviously everybody knows I teach Mental Mondays. That is my favorite class to teach. I say that all the time in class and I, I mean that. I think when we came into Tempo there, I had, I know I had fear because I was so used to teaching in, in person and being that I have a performance background, I've sang and performed my entire life. Like that's where I get my energy is from seeing people enjoying what I'm doing. And with Tempo, I was like, I mean, I don't see it. You you get stuff on in social media and people message you, but you don't get to see that instant gratification, which that fuels me. Like seeing people enjoying it, I'm like their smiles. Yeah, yeah, you know? they're them loving it. I'm like cool. So this, I'm killing it. Yeah. But in that room, you 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 assume you're killing it, but you don't know if you're killing it. And so I think now that I teach that Mental Mondays class, it's crazy to me because there's nobody in that room still. There's no one there. I can see the usernames on the screen. And this might sound crazy, but I feel their energy still mm. though. Like by seeing the reps going up, by just seeing the people show up, there's this weird thing that happens where I'm like, I feel like there are 75 people right in front of me. So what was it like transitioning from the military back into civilian life? And how did you navigate your way into the fitness space? It was hard. It was. And I remember thinking to myself, it wasn't going to be hard. So in the military, when you get out, like when you're about to have, you have like a month left of your service, they put you in this thing called TAPS, which stands for a Transition Assistance Program. Okay. And I was like, why do I need it? I know how to, I was, that's what I did for 20 years. I don't need to learn how to be a human again, like a civilian. But it really is tough. And you know, we've talked a lot about mindset and when you're in the military, like I remember boot camp like it was yesterday. It gives me a shiver in my spine. I can never go to San Antonio, Texas because I, it haunts me at boot camp. But I will never forget like that first week is horrible, but also like you do all your paperwork and stuff. And it had gotten to a point where I'm, you know, little Clarence Harrison just staring at this paper, like to fill out a form, like an application. Yeah. And they'd conditioned my brain so much that like I saw a name, but I didn't know what to write until they told me what to write. And like, that's what it's like. Like it gets less after you get out of boot camp and you get to your duty station. It's pretty much like normal life, but on their terms. So when I got out of the military, I was like, oh, like I gotta go sign up for a gym. Like there's not just a gym on base or, oh, like work. Like I gotta go, I gotta go like apply for a job. Or even I remember when I, so I was like finishing school and I was working at this restaurant and I remember the manager came over and was like, hey, um, can you work a double? Someone called out and I was like, called out? Oh yeah. I forget like there's like an option where you get like, if you're sick, you just say, I can't come to work. Yeah. And so you like, you do that for five or six years and you're, when you get back in the real world, you're just like, oh, like it is different. And it's, it was tough just to fill my days, but also they do a really good job. And you know, I have nothing bad to say about the military. Um, one, I, I volunteered. It wasn't like they were like, you're coming with us. Like, no, I decided to go do it. And it, I got free school out of it. I got to travel the world. I met a lot of good people, but most of all, it gave me perspective and it taught me how to work hard, like truly 
work hard. And it's served me so much since I've gotten out of the military. Like any job I've had, within six months I get moved up because we were like, well, this guy doesn't mind working. And you know, and it is that perspective, but they do a good job of making you feel safe. So to leave that safety net of like, you got insurance, you know, if, if, if I ever ran out of money for some reason, well, there was, I could go eat at the dining facilities. The yeah. gym was free. They have services on base that I can go watch a movie or do things. Yeah, you're so, on scholarship. Exactly. It, exactly. Yeah, it's just like that. So then like, it's like you lose your scholarship. Yeah. And yeah. now you just got to go to college yeah. and you got to student loans. You know what I mean? And Walk on life. Exactly. <laughs> that. That's a great analogy. A walk on versus a scholarship yeah. athlete. It's a lot harder. And so it took some time to adjust. But like I said, I just took, again, I'm a weirdo. And I was like, I'm gonna be fine. I think my weirdoness of like, I'm always gonna be fine also comes from proving people wrong. Mm. Because I was told so much, oh, like I remember, I'll never forget there was like a moment where like, I came out when I was 14 to just my mom. I didn't really come out to her. She, I'm a little older now, you know? So cell phones weren't always a thing. And she heard me talking to, at the time, this guy that I was like dating, on the landline because this really? number kept calling the house. Yeah. And so she picked up the phone in her room, which is an invasion of privacy, like horrible parenting. She paid uh, the bill though. <laughs> Wonder how I know you're black? <laughs> yes, but yeah, she, she paid the bill. But she heard and it was this whole ordeal, which we don't have to go into. But I remember my mom told me, she was like, you know, I love you and it doesn't matter who you are, you'll always be my son. I'm just scared because I don't want people to treat you differently. I don't want people mm. not to give you a chance. And I think my, I'm always gonna be okay, came from wanting to prove everyone wrong. that like, I can be gay and still be fine, still yeah. be okay. Yeah, exactly. And so getting out of the military, there were a lot of people like, oh, you're getting out of the military? You're gonna regret it, you're gonna regret it. And I was like, bet, watch. All those same people sending me messages on Facebook. Man, you're doing great. Sure am, sure I, am. I would. Yeah. But it was hard, it was tough. And I think it was also just like not knowing what I was gonna do. Cause I was like, okay, I'll go to school. All right now I'm done with that. What am I gonna do? I was like bartending and just living life. And I was like, oh, well, there's gotta be something next. And that's when the whole fitness thing came into play. I was like, well, you know, I really liked working out with people. I'm pretty good at working out. My friends always wanna work out with me. Yeah. Maybe I can make money doing this. And I started just personal training. I, I remember one of the girls who I bartended with, her fiance at the time, like they were like, we're gonna get married. Will you train both of us? And I was like, Cool, this is easy. I'll train him, I'll train her. It was great, like learning how to train female body versus training males, and it's, it's vastly different. And from there, I started to just build a clientele. But it was slow, like personal training is a grind. It is a, there's a big difference between personal training and group fitness. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna try this group fitness thing. I feel like it's singing, but for fitness. Like you just put on a show, but fitness wise. Yeah. I wanna tell you because I feel like as black people, as black men, as men in general, letting other men know like, hey, I see you. You're doing the work. You're awesome. You're crushing it. Like, I see you. And I'm proud of you. I don't know what that, how much crypto that is worth, but I'm <laughs> proud of you. Cause I, I, it's real. And I, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. And um, you know, I, I wanna say that I'm, I'm proud of you as well. I feel like, from the moment I stepped on this platform with Timbo, like you have always been nothing but supportive. You know, if it was ever like a matter of like, hey, can somebody watch my class just to give me some feedback? You know, you'd be, you'd be willing to do that. And I think what I respect about you most is the fact that from jump, you've always been authentic. And I think that that's, that's just a testament to who you are as a person, like nobody, in this company can deny that nobody i'm sure that knows you can deny that you that <laughs> that you that you are like 100 always your authentic self no matter what's going on and um super respectable